he's going to be making a delicious, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to try this, a delicious, I can't today, but because he's not here, but a delicious kefir lime leaf gin and tonic with fresh lemongrass, believe it or not. So uh, Jeffrey will be popping in in a minute. We'll talk a little bit about his background because you probably recognize him from Food Network and all sorts of stuff. So anyway, um, Margaret McSweeney is our guest director today. So she'll be fielding all of your questions and comments. Um, we are giving away a copy of my Thai cookbook every day. Thai cookbook, yay, every day Thai cooking to one lucky winner. So we're gonna pick one lucky winner at random. And uh, anybody who comments, what else? Ask a question. Ask the question, you know, just put says, an emoji. Put an emoji, show us some love. We will pick one lucky winner. Okay, you guys. So, you know, every, every time we do the show, I pretend I'm not out of breath from jumping up and dancing, but I am a little out of breath. So I'm gonna just, I just slow it down, like right, you guys? Guess, oh yeah. Hey, Margaret, do we have any friends joining us right now from Facebook? Uh, well, I am trying to figure this all out. <laughs> so patience, please. It looks like- Okay. Are we live? People no are worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, yes. we'll come back to you in okay. a minute. Are we live? Yeah, we are live. Okay. <laughs> all right, yeah, so the team, the theme today is uh, there's no tie like the present. I think obviously in these tumultuous times and these pandemic times amid the riots, you guys, we just all have to live in the moment. So there really is no time like the present. There's no tie like the present. No time like the present to learn how to cook Thai cooking. And guess what? It really is so easy. When I wrote my Thai cookbook, I was like, my goodness, Thai cooking is so simple. There's just, you know, the four classic flavors you wanna achieve in every bite. Sweet, sour, salty, hot. Right, Becca? Yep. Right, Jeffrey? Oh. Well, Jeffrey's a master of global cuisine, so he knows all about infusing <laughs> sweet, sour, salty, hot flavors in yes, cooking, that's right? Yes, balance. That's right, that's right. And so uh, we'll be excited to test that cocktail in, in a few minutes. So we're gonna uh, launch into our first recipe. Today we're making a really easy green curry Thai chicken. I did make a green curry shrimp dish a few weeks ago. So it's really a riff on that. And what I love about this is you can just use some um, cut up boneless skinless chicken breast or boneless skinless chicken thigh. Becca's hot, she's gonna get some water, okay? So let me just take you through the ingredients for this dish. We are using just some cut up tomatoes or you could use uh, some cherry tomatoes. We also have some ginger, or you could use fresh lemongrass. I just have some minced ginger today because uh, Jeffrey's gonna take on the lemongrass a little later on. We also have some chopped scallions, coconut milk loaded with antioxidants. You can get in any well-stocked grocery store. We have some chicken broth. We also have a bit of fish sauce. I don't know, I'm worried I'm gonna pour this onto my cookie. <laughs> we have a little fish sauce. We also have <clears throat> some cilantro, okay? And I'm just gonna grab my chicken from my fridge. Oh, so, um, you know, I don't know if Margaret's ready. So Paul, do you wanna tell us who's joining us so far on Facebook? Ah, yes, two seconds, Katie. Uh... It looks like Shannon Cooling Troika is on and she says hi. Hi, Shannon. Big winner from a couple of weeks ago. And Douglas Haas says Ginger hey, and Marianne. <laughs> hi, Marianne. And Frederick Mead says hey. Hey, Frederick Mead. All right. Okay, you guys. So Paul, why don't we uh, go ahead and uh, switch to the top-down camera. Sure thing. Oh. Oh. It's taking a second to load for some reason. I think we kind of froze for a second, but while we're uh, figuring that out, I just, I forgot to talk a little bit about Margaret McSweeney and her oh. award-winning podcast, Kitchen Chat. Now, Margaret, You've had culinary luminaries on the show 
from Stephanie Eisard to Jacques Pepin to Carla Hall. Just tell us a little bit about your podcast and how we can find you. Oh, well, thank you so much, Chef Katie. You are a dear friend and such an important part of my culinary journey. It all began as a way to honor my late father, who was a wonderful gourmet home chef. And I, he passed away 30 years ago. And I've been on this quest to understand his joy of cooking and eating. And it's just been like hugs from heaven to have the opportunity on Kitchen Chat to interview you, as well as some other culinary friends or foodie friends, as I like to call them. And I've learned so much. Still, I'm not the best cook, but I truly understand what the joy of cooking and sharing a meal is. Oh, it's just, it's a wonderful show, you guys. She's going to copy and paste the link to her website so you can check out her podcast. And who is the next guest that'll be appearing on your show, Margaret? Yes, we've had several. Um, a really fun one coming up when we were in LA for the Taste Awards. And thank you so much for being there to celebrate Kitchen Chat being inducted into the Taste Awards Hall of Fame. I can't believe that was March 9th. While Woo! we were there, Jamie Larita and I, my co-host, uh, went into Spago and had a wonderful Kitchen Chat with Barbara Lazaroff and her son, Byron, who is really just um, stepping into a legacy. Yes. Oh, that's so exciting. Well, everybody check out her next podcast, okay? And Barbara Lazaroff is uh, quite an amazing woman. So I think you're all gonna enjoy it. All right, Paul, are we ready to go top down? We are. And... Oh, she was trying to oppose. I just tried for some reason where it looks like it froze again. Hello. Okay, you know what? If, if we can't do that, I'm just gonna go uh, old fashioned, the old analog <laughs> one camera. Oh. <laughs> where, where, like, okay. All right, Paul, should we just go ahead and do it like usual? Yeah, I think so. I, I, for some reason, it's not going to that camera. Okay, no problem. Here we go. Sorry about that, guys. You know, this is like the Wild West, you know what I mean? Doing these shows. We're just all figuring it out together. It takes a little village, culinary village. All right, I'm just heating a nonstick pan here. Then I'm adding um, some oil from our friends at World Market today. Adding a bit more oil over here. Okay, that's fine. All right. So I have some oil heating in this pot and then to this add about half of these scallions. I've got some green onions here. You could just use white onions if you wanted to and then I'm just gonna add some ginger. So yes, please, some fresh minced ginger. And then to this, we're going to add some green curry paste. Now green curry paste, you can find it a lot of well-stocked grocery stores today. And what I wanted to say is you guys make sure, it's a little loud, make sure to check the label when you buy curry paste, Thai curry paste, because oftentimes Thai curry paste uh, actually includes shrimp paste in the ingredients. So they're not always vegetarians. Uh, so make sure that you check the label. I'm using the Thai kitchen brand today which does not contain any, sorry, any shrimp paste. Okay, to this we're gonna add some coconut milk. Now coconut milk is loaded with antioxidants and it's also really good for your immune system, all of it. So coconut milk is a great thing to have on hand to boost immunity and it's also purported to lower what? Does anybody know what coconut milk supposedly can lower? If you know the answer, please enter it now in the comment section, okay? So we're just gonna let this continue to cook and then we're gonna add some chicken broth. Now you could certainly use vegetable broth if you wanted to in this dish. We let it come to a boil. Then we're gonna add our fish sauce. Oh, whoops, that's fine. Uh, she's gonna just stir this to combine. Now, uh, substitute for fish sauce. You could use some Worcestershire sauce and squeeze some lime juice into the Worcestershire sauce. All right, now we're going to add our chicken pieces. I'm using boneless, skinless chicken breast here, you guys, which you could use 
boneless, skinless chicken thigh. You could throw in some shrimp. You could use corn. You could use beef. You could use tofu, edamame. You could, you know what you could do? You guys, you could get some incredible burger or beyond meat. You could just uh, shape it into meatballs and throw it in here for a plant-based version of this dish. And then we just added some tomatoes. And then we'll bring it back to a boil. Got it. Hey, Margaret, any new friends joining us? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Rita Drucker says, does it lower cholesterol? Philip Campy says, does it lower blood pressure? Uh, Dan Edmondson, Facebook is not lagging as much. <laughs> and Rita asks, what if you don't like tomatoes? Uh, Rita, I'm sorry, too bad. The rest of you, just kidding, you, you can omit the tomatoes or use any other kind of veggie in here, like some green beans would be delicious. All right, you guys, those are really good answers. We're gonna come back to that in a couple of minutes. So now that our mixture has come to a boil, all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put this on my stove over here and let it simmer for about five minutes, okay? And I think, oh my God, we're actually doing it on time. <laughs> uh, okay, no comments from the peanut gallery, Becca. All right, so as our chicken is simmering, I think this is an excellent time for what, Jeffrey? Cocktail time. Woohoo! cocktail time, welcome in. Jeffrey Saad, everybody. Jeffrey Saad, you might recognize him from Next Food Network star. He also hosted his own show on Cooking Channel called what, Jeffrey? United Tastes of America. Woohoo! It was an excellent show. And I don't know, can you check it out on Hulu these days or YouTube or? Yeah, it's somewhere out there. I've heard people have seen it. All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Margaret's going to. Um, copy and paste the link to Jeffrey's website so you can learn all about him. We yes. met through a mutual friend, Patrick Martin, and we've been uh, buddies ever since. And, oh, the other thing I want to say is both Margaret and Jeffrey will be featured in my new cookbook, filled with global flavors, coming out spring 2021. So yes. I'm so excited to have them both here today. So Jeffrey, tell us what you're making for us today. Well, you know, I'm thinking, okay, Katie, you're doing your Thai brilliance. What would I want to be sipping on while stirring a pot of beautiful curry like that, right? So, because of course a cocktail always makes the cooking experience better in moderation, of course. So I thought, okay, why not reflect? Why not give a little bit of a precursor to what you're about to eat? I mean, that's the beauty. Whatever you're drinking and eating, they marry, they come together to create a whole elevated flavor. So I said, all right, I'm gonna take lemongrass. This stuff is beautiful. If you don't know it, you slice it open, you pound it a little bit and it releases all of its oils. It's like lemon zest combined with this herbaceousness that is so perfumey and beautiful. And if that wasn't Do you enough- you know what I like to call lemongrass, Jeffrey? Tell me. I like to call lemongrass Ginger's frisky cousin. I like it. <laughs> that works. That works. And funny enough, there is also ginger in this. So we got lemongrass, ginger, and a little kaffir lime leaf. And many of you out there are probably going, oh, perfect. Two ingredients I'll never find anywhere, never be able to get. But if you get to an Asian market or order it online, it will change your world because, especially this kaffir lime, right, Katie? I mean, this is like taking lemon lime zest and squeezing it over a bouquet of flowers. I mean, it is so perfumey. Just one of these and a couple cups of coconut milk will make the most beautifully perfum perfumed curry, uh, curry, especially with the lemongrass. So I took a bottle of tonic water and I did this yesterday so I could test it today. And I put in the kaffir lime leaf, the lemongrass, and then a nice little knob of ginger here. And those flavors, I thought to myself, you know, the botanicals and, and gin are gonna play so perfectly with these flavors. So then I love these huge, ice cubes you know you get one of these trays you can order this online too so you get these nice big square ice cubes like this i love I know you know katie why you do this it's because then as you're sipping your beverage the ice doesn't melt too quickly and dilute the perfect balance that you just created and it kind of looks cool big old cube moving around the glass right now katie and i we always cook from the hip right all of us you like to cook you have that kind of mind tasting database you know how to whip things together but when it comes to a cocktail to me, it's like baking. You want to be exact because if you throw off that balance, changes everything, right? 
So we are gonna do one nice shot of gin. Okay, if we weren't live, maybe I'd do a shot and a half. <laughs> and then we're gonna take our, our marinated tonic water here and we're just gonna add that on top. And of course, this is, you know, as desired. I like to do about equal parts because tonic is a pretty strong flavor by itself and I really wanna taste the gin, give it a few stirs. That's the other little cocktail tip for all you out there. When you're using juices and simple syrups and mixers, you want to shake. When you're using just alcohols and tonics, sodas, you just want to stir. I mean, of course, do whatever you like, but that's just my little preference. Right. And even better, that was a total accident, but I got a piece of lemongrass in there, which is nice. Leaf. Why not even throw a little extra calf or lime leaf? If Woo! You I love, I love that. This, the nose, especially when it's as big as mine, hits your cocktail first. So to get that perfume of kaffir lime is like, all right, I already love this drink. And then, oh yeah. And I can lie as much as I want because you can't taste it anyway, but it really is brilliant. The perfume that comes off of it from the lemongrass, ginger, and then the tonic makes you pucker a little bit. And then the botanicals, the gin jump out. This is a cocktail that is going to make you beg to get to Katie's curry. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look some, I can I feel like the way you're describing the kefir lime leaf and the lemon, I feel like I can smell it here because I mean, both of those ingredients are just, they're, they're essential. They're amazing and so aromatic. I just, I love it. So Margaret, do you have any questions for Jeffrey or, or any of our viewers? Absolutely. I'm so curious, Jeffrey, on your United Tastes of America, you mentioned red velvet fried chicken. What did that taste like? And how would that, what would you pair it with with a drink? Wow, there's a powerful question. That was a while ago, but I'll tell you what was cool about United Tastes of America is every episode we would do some pop culture cuisine, right? So like it'd be the fried chicken episode. And then we go around the country trying the best fried chickens. But then we would always do one weird twist, right? Like if it was the sushi episode, we did a sushi pizza. So the fried chicken episode, we did the red velvet. I will tell you, it was one of those things where sometimes the poetry, the writing sounds better than it actually tastes. You kind of lost the flavor of it once it's, you know, deep fried. But if you could actually still taste it, I think I'd want a good old Manhattan if I was going to do a cocktail, right? Because that bourbon sweet barrel aged flavor with kind of that classic red velvet sweet flavor and something about the red, even though it doesn't affect the flavor, it's just going to look good and feel good with that Manhattan. That sounds amazing. And Margaret, do we have any questions coming in from any of our viewers for Jeffrey? I am looking and pardon my senior dog. It's take your dog to work day. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, nice every dinner. day is bring your dog to work day, I think. But while you're looking up any questions from our viewers, Jeffrey, could you use oh, vodka so instead of the gin? Yeah, you know what? I'm not a big great. fan of gin. That's a great idea, Katie. You could totally just make this a vodka tonic in the exact same mixture. Absolutely. You know, it'd be it'd really be interesting even in bourbon. It's just that with the curry, I think the bourbon might clash a little bit. Ooh. It's a great idea mm -hmm. for coffee drinkers. I would like to take all of that, put it in uh, my Vitamix, and then make popsicles out of it. What do you think? Ian, let me know. I'll bring the sticks now. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, and Margaret. Uh, Margaret. Oh, oh, she's muted. She's yeah, muted. sorry about that. And Jeffrey, you're such a guru of spice. What is the best summer spice that you'd recommend? Best summer spice, I'd probably say pick up some herbs de Provence. It's a mixture of lavender and thyme and all kinds of herbs. And the, the, it actually started years ago in the south of France because they had this abundance of all these leftover spices at the end of the season. They'd mix them together. But you sprinkle a little bit of that in a nonstick pan with butter, drop in your eggs, have fried herbs de Provence eggs, amazing. Sprinkle it over a piece of white fish on the grill or in the oven that you're braising. It just adds this beautiful bouquet. It's kind of like this chameleon because of all the different dried herbs that are in there. It goes with everything. And it's super easy to buy online or in the grocery store. It's just called Herbs de Provence. That's a great tip. That's something everybody should have in their pantry, especially during these, this crazy COVID cooking. It's a great herb you can use on almost anything. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Jeffrey. I hope you, you hang on because people may have more questions for you, okay? You got it. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a great weekend.
You too, you too. So I think this is an excellent time for guess what, Margaret and Paul? It's time for... I think it's TikTok dance party. I think it's time for Ooh. our... Ready? 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 I've been practicing for weeks. Two. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, Becca. I, I, I seriously practice all night, but I, I'm having, I'm having, I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> no, when you look that over, you're gonna be embarrassed. Becca said, once when I look that over, I'm gonna be embarrassed. But guess what? I don't care. Oh, you will. I don't care because yes, you will. I believe, you will. I believe yeah. I can tie and there's no tie like the present. I don't care. All right, you guys, we're moving on to our next recipe, which is a Thai pineapple fried rice. And I know you guys have seen me make pineapple fried rice on the show before, but today we're making a Thai version of this dish, which I love so much because we're going to be infusing it with amazing herbs like cilantro and mint and adding a hint of fish sauce. So it has uh, more complex flavors than the uh, normal fried rice in a pineapple. But the other cool thing about this dish is we're gonna serve it in a pineapple, which is so impressive for any dinner party or block party when we're allowed to do those things again. Um, but a lot of people ask me, well, how do I prepare a pineapple for pineapple fried rice? They don't, uh, they get intimidated by coring all the pineapple flesh out of the pineapple boat. So we're gonna just show you a quick video on how to do it. I did this video for um, Raina Saitel of New York Live before we made this on her show so she could figure out how to do it before we actually did the segment. So Paul, do you wanna go ahead and show everybody our how to make a pineapple boat video? Sure thing. Yay! Hi there, I'm Chef Katie Chen. Today I'm gonna to show you how to prepare a pineapple boat to serve pineapple fried rice in. We start by cutting through the leaves all the way through and cut all the way down the whole pineapple like so. So you're left with two pineapple halves. Next, we're just going to cut around the pineapple about an inch from the edge, all the way through, being careful not to pierce through the sides of the pineapple, okay? All the way through, but don't pierce through the edge. Then I'm going to make crosswise slices. Then you take a nice big spoon and just remove the pineapple from the shell like so. And there you have it, a nice, empty pineapple shell to serve your pineapple fried rice in. Then you just take the pineapple flesh, cut around the core, and then just dice the pineapple. your pineapple fried rice. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on making a pineapple boat for your next pineapple fried rice recipe. See you soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Hi guys. Thanks. Thanks for indulging us in watching that video because people always want to know how to do it. Obviously you don't have time to make a pineapple boat 
you could just chop up the pineapple and throw it in and not worry about that, but it's definitely an impressive thing to do the next time you have guests over. So here we have our fresh topped up pineapple, as you saw in the video. And Becca's gonna take us through the other ingredients that go in this dish. So we have some cilantro and mint, our pineapple, thawed frozen peas, ginger and garlic, shrimp, and some soy sauce. And we also have some fish sauce oh, and mixed sauce. in with the soy sauce, you guys. Now you don't have to use shrimp. You could do chicken, you could do pork, you could do beef, you could do edamame, you could skip, you know, all that stuff all together if you just want a vegetarian version of the dish. Super easy recipe. Are you guys ready to get cooking? Hey, Margaret, any new friends joining us? Yes, they are. June Bryant joined and she says, love your tidbits and tutorials on pineapple tidbits. And also <laughs> Car Carol McGovney. I hope Thank I'm pronouncing Carol. everything right. Uh, joined and she said, um, lemongrass is so good. <laughs> So lots of awesome. people yeah, yeah. and Monica, um, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Years Balbueno. She says hi there. Hi there, everybody. Don't forget to watch Monica Ganeras Balboa singing show on Facebook. It's so incredible. All right, let's get cooking with our pineapple fried rice. But I wanted to go back to the coconut milk question and answer the trivia quiz. The answer is it does lower cholesterol and high blood pressure. So you guys are all winners. And don't forget, if you comment today, you are eligible to win a copy of my everyday Thai cooking cookbook. Just make a comment or uh, ask question or, or put emoji, show us some love. Speak exactly. Your heart, not like okay, I'm sorry. Hey, Paul, do you want to see if the top down camera is working again? Yeah, let's give it a try. Okay. And it's not. It seems like it's um well, on the camera is not on the working. Hmm. Oh well. It said on the phone that that's okay. That's how it goes. All right. Can you take this book away? And so Katie, speaking of your book, I did post the link on Amazon to your cookbook. Oh, thanks, you guys. So if you don't win today, Margaret just posted the Amazon link and you can purchase the book on Amazon or find booksellers everywhere. Okay, I'm heating, once again, a nonstick skillet. I prefer a nonstick skillet because it requires less oil and your proteins don't stick to the bottom of the pan. And then to this, I'm adding some oil. So then we just let the oil heat up like so. And then Margaret, the recipes are available where? They're available at chefkatiechin.com, right? <laughs> Yes, they are. And I posted a link to chefkatiechin.com as well. Woo! Thank you so much. Okay, next, we're going to find another spatula. Here we go. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Important thing when you're cooking, especially stir fry, you have all of your tools and ingredients cut, cut clean and ready to go. And your specialist. <laughs> okay, so my oil is heating up. Now, the key to making successful fried rice is to using rice, is to use rice from the night before that's been chilling in your fridge. So it's excellent for takeout. But if you don't have leftover rice, it's okay, just mix them up. But that's just a great way to ensure that the grains separate as you're stir frying the rice. Now Becca's gonna take over and she's gonna go ahead. She's, she's breaking up the grains as she cooks and you want the oil to coat all of the grains of rice but it only takes about a minute or so she's going to chop up those little clumps of rice and then next we're going to add to this our cooked shrimp okay guys i just have some cooked shrimp now i'm all about saving time so if you want to buy shrimp that's already been steamed or boiled in the freezer section i say go ahead and do that because anything that encourages you to cook Asian food, I say just go for it, okay? Next, thawed frozen peas. I also like to call this dish the everything but the kitchen sink fried rice, fried rice, because you can put any leftover into the fried rice. You just said everything but the kitchen sink fried rice, fried rice. 
Yeah, I meant to say that. Oh. <laughs> I meant to say that. You could add some asparagus. You could use some red bell pepper, yeah. right? You could even put bacon in this dish. Kimchi, kimchi would be amazing. Put a little fried egg on top of that, it would be great. Now we're gonna add our herbs. We have some cilantro. Ooh, and our fresh mint. Our fresh mint from Melissa's. So, aroma so aromatic and perfumey, as Jeffrey was saying, which is just a signature, signature part of Thai cooking. I'm adding some ginger and garlic in here as well. We're just gonna saute all of that. And it just smells so good as it cooks, you guys. Next, we're gonna add our combination of soy sauce and a bit of fish sauce, okay? Then I'm gonna add, ooh, our fresh juicy pineapple that we cut, you got it back out here, I got it. Very nice. And then we're gonna add to this some scallions. There we go, looks so good. I wish so I could show you the top down. So how much time would you say is the prep time for this dish? I'm sorry, it's so loud here. Can you screen that question? Sure. <laughs> what would the prep time be for the dish? How long well, does it take to make it? The prep time, I'm gonna say, listen, maybe including coring out the pineapple shell, maybe 15 minutes. If you did the pineapple shell in advance, everything else takes, I mean, literally, maybe five minutes, eight minutes. Especially if you buy the shrimp already cooked, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm gonna show you our gorgeous fried rice. Look, so wasn't that fast, you guys? Everyone out there that thought that was fast, just give me a thumbs up, okay? Now you wanna season with a bit of salt and pepper. Here, let me put some salt here in my hand. Then Beck is going to use our spice grinder for the pepper. Here we go. Becca's lecturing me for not being prepared. Margaret, can you relate having two daughters, two grown daughters? Oh, yes. <laughs> How long does it's, it's a joy. It's How a joy. <laughs> That's why I have to comment. It is a joy. <laughs> Paul, can you relate with two sons in college? Yes, they definitely keep me in check all the time. <laughs> I always say if I could keep it real. You know what I mean? I do. She keeps it real. Okay. <laughs> Lots of comments coming in, Chef Katie. Uh, <laughs> Harry, Harry says, beautiful. Randall Johnson, fish sauce is magic. Ooh. Philip, we love seeing you. Who needs a second oh. camera? Diane uh, DeGustafson says, it gives you a thumbs up. June Bryant, this dish would be great healthy option for July 4th weekend. Yay! Oh my God! I, I we're having a party, you guys. We're having a party. Oh and then Becca says, "No, we're not." Randall Johnson from Washburn High School. Paul and I both say hi. Thanks Mr. for Miller, Thanks hey. all of you for joining and for all your great comments and questions. Okay, now look at look at that pineapple. So beautiful. We're just gonna load it up with our delicious pineapple fried rice, Thai style. Becca's correcting me. Once again, Thai style, but no fried rice. She's telling me I need to add more shrimp. That's true. Okay, I'm adding more shrimp. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Now, see that? Look how gorgeous this is. We're also going to add some more herbs on top, some cilantro, and what else, Becca? Mint. Mint, yes. Very good. Maybe some more scallions. Now, listen, if you wanted a spicy version of this dish, I would saute some Thai chilies along with the garlic and the ginger, or you could just give a few squirts of some sriracha sauce that you can get on worldmarket.com. Okay, oh, yeah. here's our gourd, look at that. Doesn't that look good, Margaret and Paul? That is oh, gorgeous. Good. Fantastic. I so wish you guys could be here right now. Well, hold on, hold on, we're not done yet because guess what? Our delicious, yummy curry is ready. We just had to simmer it for about five to ten minutes i'm gonna becca go talk to the audience just my here. shirt <laughs> i tie dyed it myself tie dyed. Oh, it's a heart 
Good job, Becca. She did tie dye that by herself. Okay, here we go. Now, I just, thank you. I just scooped up our delicious Thai green curry chicken on top of a bed of steaming hot jasmine rice. Now Becca's gonna give us a squeeze of lime juice because you know, we always want that sour tart note in any Thai dish. So I like to serve this with a side of lime wedges. Then I'm going to garnish with some green onions along with some cilantro. You could also garnish with some basil, Thai basil or regular basil. And Jeffrey was talking about the amazing aromatic quality of kaffir lime leaf. I often like to just take some kaffir lime leaf. I just rip them open to release all the amazing oils. Just pop it into the curry as it simmers. And it's, it's truly amazing. A tip about kaffir lime leaf, because some people are like, I don't go to the Asian market that often. You can actually freeze kaffir lime leaf, which is great because we don't always get to go to the Asian market. And then you can have it on hand whenever you need it or grow some kaffir lime leaf. A lot of my friends do that as well. Okay, so let's review our delicious recipes available where, Margaret McSweeney? Are available on katiechin.com. Oh, Chef Katie Chin Chef Katie Thank Katie you, Margaret. Com. Thank you, Margaret. Okay, <laughs> let's just review. We have our delicious Thai style pineapple fried rice served in a pineapple. Our delicious chicken curry, Thai style green chicken curry. And this we made literally, guys, in like 12 minutes also. So both dishes you can get on the table in under a half an hour. Wow. Right? Especially if you have leftover rice. And then last but not least, you guys, we're giving away a copy of my Thai cookbook, Everyday Thai Cooking, to one lucky winner. So don't forget to comment before we sign off. We're going to sign off in just like a minute or so. So don't forget to ask a question, show some love. I'm copying Becca now. <sighs> show, an <laughs> show an emoji. <laughs> Whatever. Say that again. Oh, Becca wants to know if we have any new people, Margaret. You're on mute. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, Perry and Salati says, great tie-dye, tie Friday. <laughs> tie-dye Friday. Woo -woo. <laughs> and Shannon is saying, great job, Becca. Daniel Horning, can't wait to try this. So lots of great um, visitors coming in. Thanks, you guys. Uh, I know I love, I'm jealous of Becca's tie-dye because we did a family tie-dye activity and mine didn't come out so great. But Becca's looks awesome. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. I'm so excited that I had you lovely guests on today. Don't forget to check out kitchenchat.info, right, Margaret? That is right. That's right. Thank you so much. It was such a delightful honor to be with you today. So fun having you. So make sure to check out Margaret's website, kitchenchat.info, and listen to her next podcast. Also, Jeffrey Saad, are you still out there? Are you out there still, Jeffrey Saad? I think Jeffrey left. Okay, Jeffrey's left the building, but don't forget to check out his website, jeffreysaad.com, for all his amazing recipes and uh, try to check out his episodes of his uh, show on uh, the cooking channel because it was really phenomenal. All right, you guys. So we are going to count you down. 10 seconds. You have 10 more seconds to comment, ask a question, or just show us some emoji love, and you'll automatically be entered into win a copy of my Thai cookbook. Are you, re are you ready, Becca? Yeah. Are you ready? Ready to go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, bless up! And thanks to Paul Hemstreet for being our amazing director as always. Until then, have a great weekend. Yeah. Happy cooking. We'll see you Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll be making 4th of July recipes. So have a great time. Bye.